Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my gardening channel, Gardening in Cold Spring Harbor. For those of you who are new to my channel, or maybe you guys have forgot, I'm in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, my loyal viewers? And yes, you guys, my precious subscribers. How is the weather in the gardening zone where you live? How many plants have you planted or transplanted so far? Let me know in the comments below. How is your gardening coming along so far this growing season? What are we going to talk about today? Are you guys dealing with aphids? Well, guys, warmer weather is here. And today we're going to talk all about dealing with aphids, preventing aphids, treating aphids, and everything you need to know about aphids in your home garden. So come with me, let's get started. For those of you who are looking for that online gardening channel that offers tips, tricks, and just easy yet proven gardening advice to take your home garden to that next level then you are absolutely in the right place start with going below this video and clicking the subscribe button also if you never want to miss any of my new upcoming gardening videos click the bell icon youtube will notify you every single time i'll upload a new gardening video now come with me let's start gardening so today guys we're going to talk all about dealing with aphids how do you identify and how do you prevent aphid infestation in your home gardens what are these tiny little green things all over my climbing rose plant these are unfortunately aphids you guys i came out this morning to take a look at my climbing rose and i noticed that it's covered covered in these green tiny tiny little insects and those unfortunately are aphids So what are aphids, guys? Aphids just seem to find their way to almost every person's home garden. So aphids, they're small, they're soft-bodied insects that feed by sucking the nutrient-rich liquids out of your plants, guys. And in large numbers, when you have an infestation of aphids, they weaken your plant significantly. They also harm your flowers and the fruits on your plant. Aphids multiply quickly, very, very quickly, guys. So it is very crucial, important to get them under control before the reproduction phase begins. The good news is that they tend to move rather slowly. So with diligent care, you can easily, easily get them under control. You can manage the situation. As soon as you notice even one aphid, a sign of aphid, you need to get the situation under control. So let's talk about identifying aphids. Aphids are tiny. Even adult aphids are less than a one quarter inch in length. They come in various, various colors. Depending on the variety of aphids, aphids can be black, red, white, green, even brown. So here on my rose, this is the rose aphid variety. As you could see, they are this pale a milky green color. There are white, red, black, woolly aphids, pear-shaped aphids. These are the rose aphids that are apparently overtaking yet another 
one of my rose shrubs and I just noticed it today. And you definitely have to know which aphid you're dealing with. Luckily, the way you treat them is relatively the same regardless of the variety of your aphid. Now let's talk about some of the common signs of aphid and aphid infestation. Aphids typically start to colonize a section and start sucking the sap out of your plant, hence making the leaves curl up. The way that this leaf of my rose plant is curling down, it is not a good sign. And as I turn my leaf upside down, I can also see aphids underneath. Aphids also secrete a honeydew-like solution, which in turn attracts ants to your plants. So if you do start seeing a colonies of ants near or on your plant, very, very high chance that there is also an aphid infestation on that same plant. Aphids can also spread disease. Another way to tell if your plant is having an issue with aphids is when you're watering your plant and if you see milky uh, runoff substance. So instead of your water being clear, when it's coming off your plant's leaves and if you see that it's milky or white, whiter color, that is another sign that your plant is infested with aphids. So that milky runoff substance that will be coming off your plant's leaves, for example, your cabbage or your Brussels sprouts, those are aphids. So when you're watering your plant and you see that run off, you're basically washing off the aphid infestation with your hose. The thing about aphids is when food quality suffers, they can travel to other nearby plants and reproduce, hence starting a new colony. While in general, aphids feed on a wide variety of plants, different species of aphids can be specific to certain plants. Your potato plants are also susceptible to aphids and aphid infestation. Some other examples are bean aphids, cabbage aphids, potato aphids, even melon aphids. Don't think for a second, guys, as I said previously, that all aphid varieties are the same color. Some aphids are darker colors, such as dark brown. Those aphids, and I just inspected my potatoes, and luckily, thank goodness, I have no aphids on them. But I will attach a uh, picture to this video what a potato aphid looks like. They are tiny, tiny, less than one quarter inch in length and they are dark brown color. So you would see those guys under your potato leaves. In, they get into all the crevices, all the tiny little indentations on your leaves. You would see your leaves covered, covered in these dark brown tiny tiny insects. Now let's talk about what aphid damage looks like on your plants. Let's say you guys did not notice that you have aphids or a colony of aphids on your garden plants. But when you come, you already see the damage done to your plant. So what should you look out for that would let you know instantly that your plant has been struggling with an aphid infestation? Baby aphids are also referred to as nymph. So nymph and adult aphids, they feed off of your plant's juices. So while feeding on the plant's juices, they are at the same time attacking the leaves, the stems, the buds, and even the fruits that are growing on your trees. Of course, they prefer new growth the most because it's the most succulent flavor for them. 
When looking at your plant, what should you look out for that would let you know that your plant is struggling with aphids? Look for misshapen, curling, stunted, or even yellowing leaves. Here's an example of a yellowing leaf. Here is an example of a curling leaf. As you could see, this leaf is nice and straight on my rose, and this one is curling downward. Always remember to inspect the underside of your leaves, not just the tops. Always turn your leaf around and look for any sign of insects or aphids. As you could see, I turned this curling leaf upside down and there they are hiding right underneath my leaf. And you could see them all over this flowering bud. Also, always check your leaves and your stems for that honeydew, sticky substance. Remember that sugary liquid is produced by aphids as their waste product. Then in turn, it will attract ants, which gather the sticky substance as a form of their food. Also, the flowers and the fruits can become damaged and or distorted due to aphids feeding on them. In today's video, we're talking all about one of the most annoying pests in our home gardens, and those are aphids. And as much as I always like to say that prevention of pests is always the key, sometimes we cannot control every single situation, every single pest in our home gardens. So now let's talk all about getting rid of aphids. So now depending on what plant or what kind of tree you're trying to treat against aphids will depend on what product you can use. So for fruit trees or for shade trees, spray dormant insecticidal super soap. As you could see that it helps kill over 30 insects. You can also use horticultural oil on your uh, trees to kill those overwintering aphids. All of these products that I have in my home are meant for organic gardening. So I use Rose RX as well as neem oil when I spray my rose shrubs, my climbing roses, my rose trees to treat them against aphids. As you could see, the Rose RX 3-in-1 is also organic and it shows you right here that it helps get rid of aphids, white flies, black spot, powdery mildew, even spider mites. Neem oil, this is a ready to spray bottle, but you can get this in a form of a concentrate and you can dilute it yourself in any basic spray bottle. You could see over here to use on roses, flowers, house plants, controls black spot, powdery mildew, rust, spider mites, aphids, white flies, as well as other insect pests. And what I love about this is that it's organic products. So there are also beneficial insects, such as ladybugs and parasitic wasps who will feed on those nasty aphids. So how do you attract those beneficial insects? By planting beautiful, beautiful flowers that attract these insects and pollinators. By creating a beautiful landscape in your home garden, you can attract beneficial insects that will feed and kill those nasty aphids. Another way to prevent aphids is by 
doing companion planting. What does that mean? Aphids do not like catnip. So if you plant cat catnip, say next to your tomato, your gorgeous tomato plants, chances are aphids will not be touching your tomatoes because they will be absolutely repulsed and disgusted by that nearby growing catnip. Aphids are also attracted to mustard plants. You can grow plant and grow those as a trap for those aphids. So wherever you plant your mustard plant, aphids will be attracted to that mustard plant instead of your herbs and the veggies and the flowers in your home garden. So what are some of the herbs and veggies that you most likely grow in your home garden that repel aphids? away from your plants let me show you believe it or not guys chives repel aphids not only do they make beautiful beautiful landscape over here with those pretty pretty purple flowers they also serve well guys by repelling aphids guess what guys garlic also repels aphids when you plant it near lettuce peas which is exactly why i have my garlic growing right next to my peas you can also plant garlic next to your rose bushes and it will repel those nasty aphids away for those of you, my viewers, who for whatever reason cannot get your hands on either the insecticidal soap or Rose X or neem oil, I want to tell you about a uh, ingredient that most of us have in our medicine cabinets at home that if mixed properly in any kind of a spray or misting bottle can help kill and repel insects naturally. And that mystery ingredient is rubbing alcohol. 70% rubbing alcohol when mixed with water in a spray bottle. It can help kill and repel aphids. So what exactly do you need in order to make this alcohol uh, mixture that would control aphids. You combine five cups water, two cups rubbing alcohol, and one tablespoon of liquid dish soap. That's all you need, guys. When spraying your plants, whether they're rose bushes, fruit trees, cabbage, potato plants, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, anything. Make sure you don't spray the whole bottle at once. Choose one side of your plant, spray that down first and see what happens. See how your plant reacts. You do not want to overdo it either. So when spraying your plant with either neem oil or rose x make sure that the aphids do come in direct contact with that spray that you're spraying this is the only way it's going to work if you aim that spray directly at the aphid infestation so that honeydew substance which we were talking about that is produced by the aphids can encourage fungal growth that fungal growth is called sooty mold, which then in turn causes the branches and the leaves of your plant to appear black in color. So if you notice that your stems of the leaves of your plant are changing to black color, that is another sign of aphid infestation on your plants. Last but definitely not least option to prevent and kill aphids is to simply hose them away usually just doing that 
should take care of your infestation. Aphids are very light weight and hosing them off with a heavy stream of water most cases just does the job and aphids are not known to come back to the same plant they're known to either go away for good or to relocate somewhere else this is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, if you found this video to be useful, helpful, informative, show me that support by clicking thumbs up below. Super easy for you to do, and it's so pleasing and rewarding for me. Also, guys, leave your comments below. Tell me all about your gardening zones tell me have you had an issue with aphids in the past and what method you used to kill and prevent aphids in your home gardens and last but definitely not least if you haven't yet done so do so today guys subscribe to my channel gardening in cold spring harbor click the bell icon if you never want to miss any of my new upcoming gardening videos stay healthy happy and be well guys and i'll see you again soon in my new upcoming gardening videos bye guys